debate today is this has to prioritize asylum seekers who engage in armed struggle against oppressive regimes. Now, what do we see in the world today, specifically in the Middle East? We see a plethora of these oppressive regimes committing gross human rights violations against their citizens, and we believe that providing these uh, citizens who flee their nations from those very regions, from that very region, we believe providing them with asylum is essential. Now, however, we do believe that from those given asylum, there is a distinction that needs to be made depending upon the severity of their uh, the need for asylum. And so before I really delve into my positive case today, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to define the key terms in this debate. Side proposition would define asylum seekers as individuals who flee their nation due to fear or actual persecution due to either political, racial, or social reasons. We would define armed struggle as these as individuals who take up arms against their government and fight them. We would define oppressive regimes as nations where there are gross human rights violations committed by the government and use of lethal force by the government. Now, let's move on to the definition of prioritize, ladies and gentlemen. Now, side opposition, side proposition today needs to establish the fact that developed nations, everyone does deserve this right to asylum. However, the real world situation is that these developed nations, the nations that are taking these refugees, that are taking these asylum seekers, only have a limited number of resources. There are only so many people we can save. And it's shameful that we have to say that, but that is the ground reality in the world that we see today. And hence, we believe that we would prioritize taking these people who've taken up arms against the government. By that we mean, we would take them before taking those other asylum seekers. We're not saying that we would completely reject all other asylum seekers, ladies and gentlemen. We're simply saying we would give preference and expedient process to these people who take up armed struggle. <coughs> now, side opposition, no, thank you, sir. Side opposition may come up in question, how would you tell who's in armed struggle, who it was engaged in armed struggle? How would you define that practical aspect, ladies and gentlemen? And we believe that, you know what, it's not possible in 100% of the cases. However, we believe that in a vast majority of cases, because of the fact that we have intelligence resources on the ground, because of the fact that you have journalists and other information gathering services on the ground in these nations, and you have this, well, a lot of information coming in from that region. You have these roasters of the rebel movements themselves. They keep track of who's taking part in the armed struggle. Point and, because, oh, thank you, sir. and because you have all of that information, we believe that in the vast majority of cases, you will be able to prove that someone was engaged in armed struggle, and hence the, the criteria for priority will be met. Now, thank you, sir. Now let's move on to what team proposition is going to debate, or the levels on which we're going to debate to you today. First of all. There is a need to prioritize between asylum seeker, uh, between armed, those asylum seekers that were engaged in armed struggle and those that were not. Secondly, how these individuals who were engaged in armed struggle have a greater right to this asylum. And thirdly, which my second speaker, Anna Asri, will talk to you about, is how it provides a greater incentive for stronger resistance within these oppressive regimes and it sets a positive trend. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, let's move on to the first major issue side proposition is going to bring to you today. Now, we can see that there are gross human so rights violations right. taking place in these nations, but before I move on, I'll take the deal I have, sir. Yes, so you're essentially saying there is no objective measure to determine what is oppression or what is an armed struggle. Sir, we believe that gross human rights violations, like handing your people from street lamps in the street, is an empirical and tangible measurement, sir. So, that's, that's that one. Now, since we've shown to you that within these nations, yes, this population is under threat. The population is being committed these crimes against, ladies and gentlemen. But as I talked to you, as I mentioned to you earlier, developed nations do have only a limited number of resources. Now, we believe that the utilitarian calculus implies that those resources be best spent when they're used against people who are under the most threat, ladies and gentlemen. And now, throughout this argument, I'll keep proving to you how we believe that those engaged in armed struggle are actually under a greater amount of threat. Now, ladies and gentlemen... On a point of view... No, thank you, sir. Now, we believe that you have two kinds of people seeking asylum, really, ladies and gentlemen. Those that aren't in these rebel movements, that aren't in this violent conflict, and those that are. Now, what is the fundamental difference between those two? Now, we believe those that are in this violent conflict, they're constantly on the front lines. They're fighting actively against their government. Every time they go out on that street, no thank you sir, and they fight their government's oppression, they're putting their own lives on the line to save those of their fellow civilians, of their fellow Libyans, of their fellow Syrians. And we believe the fact that they do that, that puts them under a great amount of risk, ladies and gentlemen. No thank you sir. On the other hand, 
yes, your other peaceful protesters, they are also under threat. But the fact is that they're not being actively hunted by the government, ladies and gentlemen. Your secret police and your military isn't actively pursuing them because of the fact that they raised arms against them. Most of those people are only really killed because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, ladies and gentlemen. And we believe saving those that are actively being hunted by those governments that are in a greater emergency, Point, sir. No, thank you, sir. then these peaceful protesters, that should take more value. Because the fact is that we agree that right to life is essential in both cases. But if you examine under which case is right to life under greater threat, you will see clearly and every single time that it is these armed struggles, these people who are taking up arms against their government that are under greater threat, ladies and gentlemen. And so we believe that a responsible government has the right to take this into calculation, to take this into their analysis, and because of the fact that they're under greater threat, because of the fact that they're in a greater and more vulnerable position, they should be given asylum first, ladies and gentlemen. And then we're not against the, pol the policy of giving the others asylum as well. We're saying first deal with those that are under greatest threat and then move on to those that you can deal with in a more calm and long elongated manner. Now, let's move on so, to the second argument, ladies and gentlemen. Before that, I'll take this bill. Yeah. So, can you please tell me how you're going to establish that this armed struggle is for a just cause which would justify to the international community that this is uh, something that should be given legitimacy. Alright ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned to you earlier, when your fellow civilians are being hanged in the streets, when they're being criminally prosecuted without any evidence, when they're being taken as political prisoners for no reason, and if you, to fight that, you take up arms, that is obviously a just struggle ladies and gentlemen, because you're trying to save the lives of your fellow civilians. And in that case, these rebels actually have the support of the international community, they have the recognizance of the international community, and that is what legitimizes them. So let's move on to the second argument now, ladies and gentlemen. Why we believe that there is a right to life for both cases, but why do we have the right to prioritize one's life over another, ladies and gentlemen? Now the fact is that these people who are engaged in armed struggle, they put their own lives on the line every time they go out on the front lines for their fellow civilians. They may see ten, save tens of hundreds of people, ladies and gentlemen, every time they go out. But that is at great risk to their own lives. That is at great risk to their own personal safety. And we believe that someone who shows that willingness to sacrifice, who shows that willingness to, put, to disregard their own life for the sake of their fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, we believe they deserve some sort of acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. We believe they deserve to be recognized as great individuals, as altruistic individuals who should be given this asylum over others who just sat in their homes. Now, we're not saying that we're not going to give those other asylums just to clarify that once again, ladies and gentlemen, we would give those asylums. But we're saying that just because of the fact that these more altruistic individuals who put more on the line every single time, who did not care about these oppressive regimes hunting them down, who did that, all of that to save their fellow citizens, we believe if you don't recognize that that is a crime, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't acknowledge that accomplishment, if you don't acknowledge that process. And so what have I shown to you today, ladies and gentlemen, my face. Now I've shown to you that everyone has this right to save their life. But we've also shown you how a distinction can be made because of the threat that these people were engaged in armed struggle are under and because of the accomplishments that they achieved and for those reasons I beg you to perform.